There's a few werewolf tribes that no longer exist, and without a doubt, the most infamous of all are the White Howlers. The White Howlers used to be these uh, Scottish Highlanders with this blue war paint. They were very fierce, very seclusive, and very spiritual. And they had this uh, rite of passage, this very demanding rite of passage, where they would travel into the near Umbra, and from there go into the realm of Malfis. Now, the realm of Malfis is a very, very dangerous place where banes and worm servants and spirits uh, of the worm roam freely and there's a place called the spiral labyrinth in the realm of Malfis and in the middle of that spiral labyrinth is the temple of Malfis and the white howlers would test themselves physically and spiritually by going into that spiral labyrinth and co do combat against uh, the servants of the worm, these banes and, and spiritual uh, servants of the worm. And um, in the Dark Ages, when the Roman Empire attacked uh, the British Isles, uh, their forces came to a halt in the northern part of the British Isles because they came into contact with the White Howlers. They had already uh, stomped uh, Fiannas under their foot, but when they came into contact with uh, the White Howlers, they, they met a fierce enemy. Their, their combat w amongst each other became immensely uh, ferocious, and uh, the White Howlers started to lose members of their tribe to that combat. The, as, as more and more members of the White Howlers uh, do, uh, died in the combat, uh, their rage became more and more immense. And you would see, uh, w once their rage had gone up uh, more and more, when more and more uh, White Howlers would return from the spirit world after the rite of passage at the realm of Malfis, they would sound very different. They would sound uh, like they had this uh, new insight. They see Worm in a very different way now. They have been in the realm of Malfis, and when they return, they talk about how Worm, they now realize that Worm is a part of this greater balance in the world and how the worm's uh, philosophy is this and this and how uh, now uh, after all this time they finally realize that worm is this and worm really means that and that and that's, that's sort of a disturbing thing. And uh, once uh, the Romans, uh, Roman onslaught became greater and greater, and finally their kinfolk fell into the allures of the worm that the Roman Empire brought with them, uh, the, uh, the white howlers finally uh, started to come back uh, in such uh, lengths of the worm's uh, impression that they started to fall to the worm. Uh, multiple different uh, white howlers uh, started to return uh, from the uh, spirit world completely uh, in the in the palm of the worm. And once they went to combat the Roman Empire, uh, they opened the gates for worms' minions to enter this world, and they uh, they unleashed banes and they unleashed unleashed spirit servants of the worm and hell spawn and all sorts of vile creatures to the world and with their aid they crushed the Roman Empire's invasion and they saved themselves from the Romans. But at this point they had already gone on uh, too far. They were too far in the influence of the worm, in the pocket of the worm, and uh, they were their, uh, the worm's tools at this point. And the worm instructed them to go into different gardens uh, in their highlands and uh, corrupt them, make them uh, the worm gardens. And they did. They went and they uh, destroyed Gairns, and uh, the f f one final, the largest, most powerful Gairn in their territory was in this loch. This uh, small island in the middle of the loch is where the White Howlers' elders always stayed, and where they uh, had their final stand when the forces of the Worm, with these new uh, White Howlers who had turned to the Worm, uh, approached them. And uh, the tentacles of the Worm came up from the loch and dragged the elders of the tribe down into the realm of Malfis, into the temple of Malfis. They were corrupted, they, uh, spirits. Uh, of the worm were housed into uh, items to make uh, worm s spirit uh, weapons, make worm fetishes. Uh, the white howlers 
fur became black, filled with, uh, with, uh, pesticides and all sorts of boils and skin conditions they became horribly uh, horrible looking their uh, their teeth became crooked and overly uh, long and, and sprouting into different uh, uh, directions their uh, noses became more like these bat noses their ears became like these uh, hairless uh, more bat uh, ear looking ears they became very twisted there they became very very vile and they became the black spiral dancers. Now, once they became the Black Spiral Dancers and the uh, Roman Empire had already been stomped out of the uh, British Isles, the next foe that these new uh, new uh, insane werewolves uh, these black spiral dancers faced were the Fiannas, the Celtic werewolves of the British Isles and uh, they had the, a war of their own and uh, these now uh, vile uh, evil uh, hate driven insane werewolves these black spiral dancers were defeated by the Fianna and the, and the Fianna uh, destroyed them uh, to the point of uh, uh, the last survivors of the Black Spiral Dancers uh, escaping the British Isles and migrating into different countries in Europe. Since then there have been many events in European history where the Black Spiral Dancers have played a role such as the Inquisition and other atrocities and when the European werewolf tribes migrated into the New World, into America, so did the Black Spiral Dancers without the other tribes knowing of course and once all the other tribes were starting to set their base in the United States so did the Black Spiral Dancers and they became a enemy to be reckoned with. They uh, left bloodshed and gore everywhere they, they destroyed villages left and right and they even opened the doors for this great and powerful worm servant a spirit entity to enter the world called the Soul Eater and it was such a terrible force that one of the uh, Native American werewolf tribes had to sacrifice themselves to rid the world of the Soul Eater and uh, and uh, that tribe was the Croatan. The Croatan uh, um, created this ritual and this rite where they would uh, they would allow the Soul Eater to devour them all and they would destroy it from the inside, thus sacrificing them. And that moment in time uh, w w became known as the Croatan Song. And uh, other places in history, like uh, in, in Scandinavia, in Sweden, in Stockholm in uh, the 1800s, uh, the Camarilla had a stronghold of the Scandinavia back then and uh, there was a strong uproar of uh, Sabat uh, uh, trying to uh, overthrow the Camarilla stronghold and uh, take control of Scandinavia and the leader of the Sabat at the time was a powerful occultist who was delving deep in uh, evil powers powers that the Black Spiral Dancers saw as worm powers and therefore they created a bond the Black Spiral Dancers and the Sabat uh, created a partnership, a bond, a truce, and uh, an, an alliance that lasts uh, to this day. From there on out, the Black Spiral Dancers and Sabat have been synonymous with each other, and they fought against the Camarilla together. Um, in the modern day, the Black Spiral Dancers have uh, realized that wherever toxic wastes and sludge and sewage and oil spills and all these sort of stuff gets to uh, uh, destroy nature, in the spirit world, uh, worm spirits and banes are very attracted to those locations. So they realize that, okay, this sort of eco-terrorism uh, of uh, dumping all this uh, toxic waste will spread the worm's influence like wildfire. So they took that on as their main uh, tactic. They, they believe very strongly in the scorched earth tactic. And that basically means that an army marches on its stomach and a scorched earth tactic basically means burning uh, the crops and uh, soiling the wells and uh, water supplies of the enemy because if you make the uh, inhabitants of the of your enemy inhabitable you know uh, it's a very difficult to uh, fight against you and that's what they're doing in a spiritual sense they are going from location to location uh, dumping these uh, toxic wastes and destroying nature thus in the spirit world uh, spreading uh, the influence of the worm and also destroying uh, the sanctuaries of werewolves and uh 
that's when Pentex comes in. Everybody uh, pretty much knows Pentex and likes Pentex, and it's a uh, giant corporation, a conglomerate that has uh, worms, <laughs> worms motives uh, very strongly in mind, and. Uh, the 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 way the Black Spiral Dancers and Pentex first started to work together was that a Pentex employee was a Black Spiral Dancer uh, who hadn't gone through his first change yet. But when he had, did and became a Black Spiral Dancer, he one day walked into the uh, uh, office with 20 torn off werewolf ears. And he was called Walks in Sewage. And he was charged with uh, taking uh, Sabat Nosferatu's with him taking shock troops with him, taking tons of uh, sl uh, toxic waste with him, and going and destroying uh, known werewolf gyrans with them. Uh, he was uh, killed in the 1980s by a uh, cautery of uh, uh, Camarilla uh, Nosferatus because of the use of Sabad Nosferatus in all these things. So, you know, there was a lot of animosity there. At this point, the Sabbat and Pentex are the Black Spiral Dancers' greatest allies, and that opens a great opportunity for crossover games. I really don't think that the World of Darkness lines are really made for good uh, crossover material, the, like one player playing a vampire and the other playing a werewolf. They really in no way get along, except in this instance. Uh, the Black Spiral Dancers are allies with the Sabbat around the world, and they get along very well and they have very similar uh, motives and common goals. So in that sense, if you want to play a crossover game, uh, have you want some of your players be Black Spiral Dancers and some be Sabbat Vampires. It'll be an evil campaign, sure, but you know that's the way to do it. That's the only way really to do it without having to uh, come up with convoluted excuses and reasons that uh, people wouldn't anyway take seriously of why these werewolves and vampires uh, would work together. Uh, but in this context, it really works. And also at this point, the Black Spiral Dancer's influence, the Worm's influence, has been spreading very greatly. The Black Spiral Dancers now are one-tenth of the whole werewolf population of the world, meaning they outnumber any single tribe. And uh, that, that's mostly because they take in so many medis werewolves. Over half of Black Spiral Dancers are Metis. They take in other uh, tribes' Metis-born uh, werewolves because they are many, many a times kicked out. And they take them in and corrupt them and uh, take them as their own. Metises have the equal standing of all other Black Spiral Dancers because Black Spiral Dancers don't see uh, Metises as a taboo because, you know, they are vile, they are evil, they are deviant, they are perverse there is a lot of perversion in uh, Black Spiral Dancer community, and thus something that can be described as equal to like incest. The union of two werewolves that produces a metis is not a taboo with them, you know, and they are all twisted and, and grotesque looking anyway. So, you know, that's one reason why their population is so high. The way the White Howlers saw the world, their philosophy of the world, was that everything is in balance. There is always a reflection to everything. There is always two sides to everything. The worm wasn't just a destroyer and an enemy, but it was also a reflection of balance. The worm was also a reflection of light and dark, uh, white and black. And uh, in the same way, werewolves and banes are reflections of one another. And uh, that's the philosophy they lived by. But once they became the Black Spiral Dancers, when they <laughs> looked at the uh, worm's balance of white and black, they became from the white howlers into the Black Spiral dancer a Dancers after the uh, uh, spiral labyrinth that they danced into madness in. And uh, they see that the worm represents balance completely and uh, that the uh, state of the world is because the weaver has gone mad and the weaver holds worm in his webs in a vice grip and that is why uh, the uh, power and the influence of the weaver must be destroyed from the earth and uh, everything must be destroyed so that balance can be restored once everything starts from anew. This is basically their corrupted new philosophy but but 
not all black spiral dancers see the world through this philosophy and certainly many black spiral dancers do not see the world uh, and what they do in this sort of uh, it's for the greater good kind of way they are all insane you know? uh, so so uh, so it's it doesn't enter into everyone's uh, mind but of course if you look at like the uh, dogma that they preach it's it's very much like this for greater uh, good type of type of mindset that you know bad guys who don't consider themselves to be bad guys you know unless they are people who really just wish to indulge in all this sort of stuff and just like any other werewolf tribe they have their own moods with uh, worm spirits getting praised in those they have their own litany they have their own kinfolk they have their own gifts and uh, they have their own fetishes and they have their own uh, rites and rituals and all this sort of stuff it's all explained in the book of the worm and I <laughs> you know I suggest getting this uh, even if you're not planning on playing uh, Black Spiral Dancer it's a very good book and it has all the information you need for playing um, or running uh, black Spiral Dancers in your games. And the Black Spiral Dancers themselves uh, are, have been a fan favorite for the longest time. A lot of people, just like how there's a lot of people who really like the Sabbat in Vampire, there's a lot of people who really like the Black Spiral Dancers. And uh, it's no wonder, they're really cool and they're really great villains. They already have like this uh, great uh, feat of, okay, they're just like the werewolves, the player characters are, but they are... Um, with the worm, they are with the enemy, they are basically like traitors and they're corrupt, they're evil and they you can see in their physical presence all the things that werewolves hate about the worm and they work together with vampires, worm servants that the werewolves despise greatly and all this sort of stuff. The Black Spiral Dancers are really cool and uh, it's a really great idea to use them in your werewolf games as the bad guys or playing crossover games, playing as Black Spiral Dancers and Sabat Vampires, that's something I really recommend.